Astro Energy Astrology Show on Blog Talk Radio with me, astrologer Shelley Overton. Each week, we go over the planetary positions, discuss astrology, and take callers' questions. If you would like to call in and get a reading, you can call 347-994-3365. Call in early as the lines fill up. December 11th, 2018, Astro Energy Astrology Show. I trust that we're all here today. I'm using Safari. It should be good. My name is Shelley Overton. I'm an astrologer in Orlando, Florida, and I want to welcome you. We are going to be talking about Sagittarius and Pisces and all the fun things that are going on this time of year and let you know what's going on astrologically. So, I'm looking out the window here, and it's pretty blue sky, amazingly enough. And guess how warm it is? It's 49 degrees. So it's pretty nippy, you know, as a Floridian now. Uh, it's pretty cold. I remember coming to Florida with the weather, and it would be cool in the winter. My parents used to live here a while ago when I was in my 20s. And I would come down for Christmas, and all the people would be wearing parkas. And I'd be like, what are you people doing? This is so comfortable and uh, now I'm one of the ones who bundle up (laughs) and I saw a lady yesterday it was probably 55 or close to 60 and she was wearing gloves so that was pretty amusing anyway um yeah so how are you doing I am in a pretty good mood and I tell you why because we've got all these lovely planets in Sagittarius I'm very very happy Um, Mercury is the only one that has not gotten there yet, but we had the moon there, I think it was a few days ago, and Jupiter and Sun are there now. So Sagittarius energy is a very outgoing, happy, pretty joyful energy. It brings through the energy of comedy and music and being in the outdoors and close to nature and all the things that really do kind of make us a lot more happy. So if you haven't done any of those things yet, please do. And I tell you, all the Christmas lights, I've been out looking at Christmas lights with my daughter, actually, I think three times already. And her boyfriend's neighborhood has these beautiful large wickets that arch over the sidewalk. And they go all the way down both sides of this one street. And it's like a winter wonderland. And I tell you, that's the energy of Sagittarius. We are in that time of year. We are enjoying the spirit of the season and that's also Hanukkah I was just noticing in my calendar here that Hanukkah ends on today so um, happy Hanukkah to all those who celebrated and we've also got a lovely moon in Aquarius today another one of my favorite uh, positions of planets because moon is of course very um, emotional And it can be closed off at times and broody because it is so emotional. It tends to shelter itself and um, put up the shell. But in Aquarius, it's like, yes, it's not in a sign that's very cooperative with cancer, but it is in a sign that is more lively and more, um, what's the word, charming. (laughs) Charming in social energy so it also coupled with the Sagittarius energy which is sextile to Aquarius meaning 60 degrees apart it is really a nice energy and I guess I'm also kind of cheerful Uh, my daughter and I follow this one YouTuber and she's uh, got she was pregnant until last night she just had her baby and it's kind of a, a fun story to watch because she was so large having this baby she still had three weeks till she was due on new year's eve and she looked like she was 11 months pregnant so she finally had it and we're both kind of happy to see that little bundle of joy come into the world so it's just i don't know i just have a good feeling today and i also get to go to uh, city hall today and i get to judge 
the competition for decorating desks in the different departments at City Hall today. So that's kind of a different thing. I honestly get a little anxious at times about going to City Hall, but um, I decided ultimately to go, and I think I'm pretty excited to do that. It's going to be a fun little thing to do. So the spirit is kind of coming in right now, and the other side of it is we also have a square of uh, Neptune and Mars joining at 13 and 16, respectively, Pisces, and that's squaring the sun and will be squaring Jupiter. Actually, I think Mars will probably go a little bit faster than a direct square to Jupiter. It already had that, but it's kind of moving away from that square, but it's still in Usually I go by eight degrees of orb, so it's one degree past that square. So fortunately, um, they are square by sign. And what that means is that the sign itself, uh, Sagittarius squares Pisces, it's 90 degrees apart. And so the energies tend to get on each other's nerves. But that's because they come from different perspectives. But I will tell you the one perspective that they both share is a connection to spirituality. And so that is really being triggered right now. I think that um, I personally went out to a Buddhist meeting last night and was finding myself kind of frustrated by certain aspects of that meeting. And so that kind of thing can happen with this energy right now. We have more of a just get it done and move on with things and really seek out that higher understanding, which is Sagittarius, very active action oriented energy, squaring Pisces, which is much more mired down in the esoteric and the visceral feeling of what spirituality feels like. So in other words, um, as an example, I used to talk to my uh, former husband about doing the Buddhist practice and he would always say, well, I like to go running or mountain biking. That's my spirituality. And it's true for Sagittarius influenced people. It is very spiritual to be out in nature or to do something physical with the lower half of your body. Again, it's the sign of the centaur. So you've got the legs are very strong in that Sagittarian energy. And so it makes a Sagittarius person feel much better when they're out exercising their legs and getting out in nature. It's just part of that uh, archetype of the sign. And then uh, Pisces, of course, I have Saturn in Pisces. He had Saturn in Sagittarius. And so I'm much more about seeking out the wisdom through experiencing things like meditation or like my Buddhist practice, I chant. So it's much more of a visceral experience, although being a Virgo, I do really like nature. So that is a good commonality. But, you know, unfortunately, Virgo opposes Pisces and squares Sagittarius. So um, there will be conflict of how we go about doing things when we have these energies in opposition or square. And so Jupiter wants to expand. It wants to bring us more awareness of the energy of Sagittarius and of how we can learn and grow and teach as well. And so education is a very big thing coming in with this energy right now. And uh, that means not just wanting to be in a classroom or wanting to learn and grow, but also teaching. And in a day-to-day -day world, it could mean that you have some connection to education. That, Like right now for me, Yesterday, I had to go to a, a meeting with the guidance counselor for my daughter at school and, and actually had a bit of a frustration with one of the teachers who was um, trying to get me to see things her way. And she was being a little, she was overstepping her bounds. And um, that can happen with Sagittarius, very forthright energy. We want to say exactly what we think and for for me, I was able to use the same energy to stand my ground and uh, say, you know, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do here. So, um, you know, it was a bit of a stressful moment in front of a few other people, but it worked out okay. You know, she she left the meeting because she had other things and it was all okay. Everything worked out fine. But um, it's something that right now will probably come up or arise because we have Mars squaring the sun so sun is ego and again it's it's having an ego attachment to being in that space of truth and this is my truth and you need to see my truth 
the way I see it. So it can be a little bit overbearing at times. And then um, Mars being in Pisces, we can hurt each other's feelings if we're not careful about that. Another example, I was at the store last night and I like, and this is an idiosyncrasy, I, I, I admit, but I like to only have a single bag when I shop in grocery stores because I don't have a recycling place easily handy and so I either reuse them or find another use but I don't like a lot of them around so I was going through the checkout and the young man I told him please just put it in one bag and he couldn't understand so I ended up being a little bit more firm about it trying to put one bag in another bag and I'm like no no just one bag and I see that that hurt his feelings a little bit when I corrected him so after I paid, I said, you know, I'm sorry. It's, I, it's not personal. I just wanted one bag. And I tried to, you know, see it from the other person's point of view. That can help. Um, I don't know if it helped him. He was a young guy, and I felt really bad all the way home for being firm with him. But um, anyway, you know, it's, it's life. I think those are the kind of things that being the Virgo I am, I always go over in my head and go, oh, was I terrible to that person? I, I, I didn't mean to be, you know, and then we beat ourselves up and chastise ourselves. So you might see some of that behavior this season. Um, we are a little testy. That ego energy with sun square Mars, it is a directed action-based energy, so it's not like we want to just sit still and do nothing. Pisces is not an energy that normally resonates to Mars because it is Neptune. It is cooperation and finding the emotional peace and uh, spiritual peace. Mars is in there kind of stirring things up, and now Mars has passed its um, – well, let me explain this. Mars is in Pisces. Pisces is ruled by Neptune. Mars just joined up with Neptune a few days ago and now is past Neptune. So now he doesn't really, and I know this is a concept um, used in other terms. So the concept is called out of bounds where say Mars goes from behind the sun and then passes the sun and now it's out of bounds, meaning it doesn't answer to that grounding energy of ego and it goes and does what it wants. Um, Now Mars is actually kind of out of bounds too from the sun it's way ahead of the sun but it's also ahead of mars or ahead of neptune which is the sign it's the ruler of the sign it's in so he's really going to start to be a little bit more brash about how he's giving information from spirit okay so that means it comes through us and then we want others to understand it we don't want to just sit still and pull back and be mellow about it aries energy in mars wants to go and say don't you see this don't you see this this is the total picture this is a bigger um spiritual connection so we have that going on right now and um, I was thinking about this earlier in the week I'm like you know I really wanted to talk about this because the Sagittarius and Pisces energy um, that's a commonality is that it's seeking out some broader understanding of life on earth and having Saturn and Pisces my life has mostly been about seeking out spiritual understanding as to how life works and what things are about. Saturn is your life purpose. And so having that energy so strong in my chart, it's difficult to just release the connection to spirit and say, okay, I'm just now in the practical material world. And so um, that's the energy we're living right now. We've got this strong action-based energy of Sagittarius and this visceral energy of Pisces. Now to the other planets, we have Mercury at 28 Scorpio. Of course, Mercury goes into Sagittarius tomorrow night. You don't know. I mean, I have a Scorpio rising. It's moving out of my first house, and I'm very happy about that. It's going into the second, into Sagittarius. And so that is about um, real estate. And, you know, again, I'll reiterate, um, music, musicians, travel, education, commonality amongst other cultures it is very much about immigrants um you know we haven't heard a tremendous amount lately about uh, what's going on in mexico with the caravan of people coming to the border i've seen a few stories about um how people are not wanting to go back where they came from and that they're kind of still sit- sitting in the vicinity of the border and there are numerous um 
things, numer numerous ways of looking at that one story from different perspectives, you know. And so that is there. That is something that is triggered right now. But Mercury, having gone back into Scorpio for the last couple of weeks, was about wrapping up an old story around feeling not good enough and feeling like somehow dependent on someone else and your value is diminished. Having gone direct a week ago, it is now primed to be in Sagittarius and say, yeah, I was a doormat before, but I'm not going to take that anymore. And right behind it, interestingly enough, is Venus in Scorpio again. So Venus just went into the sign. Mercury is going out of the sign. Venus is coming into the energy of finding her value. She was already retrograde, so now she's revisiting this energy from a different standpoint of she was in Libra saying, wow, you know, I, she retrograded from Scorpio back into Libra saying, you know, I want everybody to get along. I want cooperation, but that wasn't working out anymore. And that could also be connected to marriage and partnerships. And we really want something to go a certain way, but it just isn't necessarily giving you everything you want where before you would be more willing to cooperate or say, Hey, it's okay. My needs aren't as important. Um, having had, a lot of planets transit this part of the sky recently that are slower moving and really bringing up these issues like Jupiter two years ago was going through Libra and last year was going through Scorpio this past year, I should say um, we are at a different point. Now we are finding our value. We want to have a say we're trying to express ourselves with other people in a way that has more boundaries and more determination so venus coming into scorpio is revisiting how we've expressed our black and white values like this is valuable this isn't very cut and dry very decisive and venus again the the shadow side of life is scorpio so she's in that shadow energy right now and um and so mercury is on its way out and He's wrapping up the deep, dark side of how we think, the the psychology of the same energy. And so um, hang on one second. I've got my daughter texting. There we go. Now she knows um, that I'm on the show. Anyway, so Mercury going out of the Scorpio energy is really a finality. It's about ending some situation, something that has not ultimately served you and it's time to move on from it and it's an emotional thing we are definitely deep in the sentimentality of course mars spends the total of december in pisces so he is feeling that let me just look and uh, i'm going to go here to my ephemeris and for newbies an ephemeris is the um energy uh, the, i'm sorry the the uh table that we look at to find out the planetary positions. And I kind of like that because I'm a visual person. And so it kind of lays it out very quickly for me. I can just scan and go, yep, boom, that's the date. And um, yeah, it goes all the way to 26 by the end of this month. And it goes into Aries on the 2nd of January. So we've got the whole month really to deal with this emotional sentimentality. And I can see by the end of December, it truly is a time where we're feeling like that year has purpose that year was more emotional and now I'm really really done with this deep emotionalism and I can tell you the second week of January and again I will reiterate that too Uranus goes direct or possibly even January 1st I don't have my new ephemeris to tell you the exact time but um, by the 2nd of January Mars will be in Aries and Uranus will be direct so Hold off, I would say, wait till like the third, fourth, or fifth to do your, excuse me, hang on one second, to do your um, resolutions, okay? Because when planets are changing direction at the beginning of the year, if you're doing them on New Year's Eve, they're going to change a day later. You're going to change what you want. So definitely wait if you're going to do a grid, a crystal grid or something like that to set it in stone, literally. Um, just wait a couple days, and the beginning of the new year will really kick off more after these planets goes to, go direct. So um, that'll be, you know, a little helpful hint for your new year 
to get it started right. And then also the end of this year is going to be much more about really putting old stories to bed and um, letting go of old sentimentalities, emotionalism with people, with situations, with jobs, with where you're living. We're going to wipe the slate clean next year. Next year is off to the races, a whole new beginning, and a much more in alignment year with who you are and where you want to be in your life. So let's see what else we have here. We've got, I'll talk a little more about the moon in a second, but we've got Pluto at 19, Capricorn. I don't think he's moved for months, it feels like. And then Saturn at 9 degrees Capricorn. So Saturn has moved a few degrees this month or in the last couple months. And so he's at 9 degrees now, sextile to Venus. So this is a really good time, like I said, initiating something um, on the love end for a commitment of some sort would be good for uh, and even new money investments because, again, Scorpio rules the house of joint finances and it's also legality. So this is the energy that will bring us in something that's much more productive for us uh, romantically and financially and in joint ventures. And then Saturn, of course, in Capricorn, it's its own sign. It is looking still in the first 10 degrees looking to put those roots in deep and make something grow. Again, at the beginning of next year, Uranus goes into Taurus, and that's in March of next year. But once he's direct, he's wrapping up those old stories around um, more sort of aggressive energy and um, directed energy. Energy, again, Aries is the salesman. I'm sorry, I'm saying again a lot, but... Um, it, that's, I guess I feel like I repeat myself, but that helps you learn. So I should stop apologizing for that. But anyway, um, yeah, Aries is all about male energy and assertiveness. And that includes things like construction, um, things, any, anything of the head, uh, taking like your drive, your action towards something, making things happen. Um, emergency workers, I say that uh, frequently. It, it is you know, firefighters, because it's a fire sign, and it is an emergency worker, EMTs, um, could be anyone who deals with emergency services or situations, especially around fire. And so that's coming to an end. Uranus is about the download of information and awareness, the intellectualism of it. And so if you find yourself being more logical in certain situations about how emergencies should be handled that would be something you would see at this time but it is wrapping up an energy around that old story and it can be aggressive energy it can use intellect it can use logic to break people down it is an energy of the bully the last degrees of Aries and so I do see that when we move into the next sign because it is uh Venus ruled, it's Taurus, it's going to, you know, mellow that energy out a bit. And um, anyway, today, Uranus is opposite Venus. She is moving past the opposition because she's already out of Libra, but it is still by degree, like I think it has one degree of orb. That means one degree out of 360 in the sky that they are opposing and then she will be gone from a direct opposition to Uranus. So that is still um, kind of a head to head battle. You know, Venus and Scorpio isn't taking any prisoners and Uranus and Aries wants a fight. It wants that male energy expressed. It gets the blood going with that strong intensity. So uh, men against women today is probably going to be a head to head. And um, I think the one other thing I wanted to mention for the, English listeners is the I think last week I said something about a woman transitioning out and you know I was just thinking about Theresa May and what was going on with Brexit and she's really getting a lot of pushback on what she's trying to do there and I kind of feel sorry for her because I really personally believe viscerally my own uh, intuition that Brexit probably isn't something that should happen. I think that cooperation amongst countries is a better road than going it alone and saying, no, we're going to close our borders. That's just my personal opinion and belief system. But I do believe that Brexit may end up not happening. I remember when it happened, when the uh, 
the actual election for it happened. And I think people were really kind of confused. And then it ended up getting voted on yes. But then right afterwards, a lot of people were upset because they didn't realize just the repercussions of what would happen if they did that. And then I, I read some articles and I believe people changed their minds. And there may even be another referendum to vote on it again. The articles I read are that people are not for it as much as they were. I think it was like 57% say they don't want to leave the European Union. So um, I think that Theresa May probably is going to lose her job as prime minister over this. And that would completely connect to this Uranus opposite Venus, uh, Mars square Sagittarius energy that's going on. And, um, you know, we'll see. We'll wait and see. But moon is in Uranus today. Or moon is in Uranus. Moon is in Aquarius and that means that Uranus is answering, well, yeah, Moon is answering to Uranus. There we go. Get it on. Um, so anyway, Moon in Aquarius, it's a detached energy. It's a collective energy. It wants everybody to cooperate for the good of everyone. So it's a unionization energy. It is a humanitarian position. It is also an intellectual position, like I said. So it means that we're going to... Uh, I want to say, I don't even know if it's a word, logicize, logisticize, I don't know. I'm making it up now. Anyway, we're trying to think things through, and I want to say reason, but I don't think reason is the same as logic. Reason, to me, is more of a, a visceral, and I love that word, as you can tell, um, more of an internal dialogue, that, and not even a dialogue, it's just a feeling that comes out where you have a sense of what's right. It's like a moral energy to me so reason is much more moralistic whereas logic is just based on what is perceived as facts and I say that in quotes and that because what we see isn't always the total truth it's just what we see and we take it as fact well that happened yes that happened but what is the actual story around that event is it what you think it is or are you assigning that energy to it because it's what you saw it's kind of like the car accident witnessed by five different people and all five have a different view of that accident and what happened and whose fault it was based on where their position is so having moon there moon is Again, a little detachment from the home life right now, but um, that probably doesn't go for Scorpio Risings because that rules the house, home, and family. So there is a connection to family with people having Aquarius in the fourth house. And um, so you may see that today, but for the most part, it is a detachment from mom or the the emotionalism side of the moon and much more um, I'm just going to be very logical and detached I'm not going to take things personal so honestly that can be really helpful today it's kind of like the moon is running interference on some level between uh, more of the fighting factions in the zodiac so um, yeah moon in Aquarius sextile Sagittarius and is the adjacent sign to Pisces so it can kind of um, play referee between the two energies a bit with a little bit more of a detachment. So if you know somebody in your life and you're like, wow, they're really detached, you know, that person could be a really good referee or, you know, the person to get in between us and help us understand something. Okay. So, um, you know, I talked a lot and I'm going to take a break and then we're going to take some calls. So I'm sorry if I'm talking too fast, but uh, anyway, we'll get back here in about a minute and a half. Hi, Sunny. Hey, Luna. What you doing? Staring out at the stars? That's pretty cool. There are so many in the sky. I have heard the moon can affect us most noticeably under a full moon. Yeah, I've been studying astrology. Really? Yeah, I have a cool new ebook. It is by an astrologer. Wow, I heard her podcast. It's called Learn Astrology. It's a book for beginners and novices. It's designed with lots of visuals, which help everyone to learn. Wow, I like pictures. And the author, Shelley Overton, does a great job of explaining the different parts of astrology. You should check it out. Very cool. I will. How? You can go to Shelley's website, angeliczodiac.com, and click the link in the upper right corner. Learn Astrology. It takes you straight to the purchase page. 
If we both learn about the planets, we can see things in a whole new way. Indeed. You know, with Christmas and the holidays coming up, learn astrology makes a great gift. And until December 15th, you can get a discount. Just use the promo code ASTROE to get $5 off the purchase price. I'm so excited you can learn astrology with me. Hey, I think that's Mars in the sky, the red one. Wow, you know a lot about the planets. Hello and welcome back to the Astro Energy Astrology Show. My name is Shelley Overton and anyway, I am very happy to have you here and if you would like a private reading with me, you can get me at angeliczodiac.com. So we have a caller and we're going to take that now. Let's see, 313. Hi, 313. Who is this? I'm Vaughn Robert. I knew it. Hi, Vaughn. How are you? <laughs> I'm great and great. How about yourself, ma'am? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. You can tell I'm kind of giddy and a little goofy. What was that? Yeah, it's all good. Say happy holidays to you and the family. Aw, thanks. That's really sweet. So what can I do for you today? Well, before I do that, I just want to let you know I, I like that commercial sure. I just heard. I, I called <laughs> you about that a few minutes ago. I don't want to make up too much time. I mean, you got a lot of callers. But I like that no, commercial. No, it's all good. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Uh, I, oh, that makes it yeah, you, means a lot to me. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for me, I'm just I'm, you know, you mean I just call in and check, you know, base like uh-huh. Ramius and the submarine every now and then. He just turn around and look 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 around and see what's going on. And see him every now and again, you know. Yeah, and he's sure. Going to see like that because last the last yeah. time I told you, I told you I got fired or quit whichever one. But nothing went the way. <laughs> Tell me what happened. Tell it, me what happened. Nothing, nothing went the way I wanted to go be a Lyft driver. That didn't uh, work out. I wanted to go no. do oh, a whole bunch of other things. I had to go through a lot of stuff. But I'm happy right mm-hmm. now, though. <laughs> it's funny awesome. Thing. It was a, it was oh, a it's good ride. A well earned. It's a good. I just didn't expect it to go how it went. Is what I'm saying. Wow. Right now. Wow, so what are you doing? I was talking about, then? I'm sitting in the house. Well, you know what? Here's a couple of things. I got a, I got a, and all of that craziness. I have a book in the pipeline, in, in, in the publish house right now, in the process of getting published. That That's awesome. I've been sitting on, that I've been sitting on for two years. So, so, yeah, same. So. You know what? Because we have the same birthday, except for a different year. That's amazing because mm-hmm. I, I also did two years writing my book and I'm in the process of trying to find a publisher because I really want it in print. But right now I'm doing the ebook and it's the same. It's kind of like I didn't really get on it as, as I mean, I was working on it, but it was a very long drawn out mm-hmm. process. So I, I same thing. It's interesting. Wow. You know but good. I'm I understand what you went. I understand yeah. you went on that, that process, but for me, that process yeah. was me going through the process of being that I've written other things. I just mm-hmm. had that one. I didn't, I was finished for two years. <laughs> yeah, I just, oh, my you goodness. You know, the way that went. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I got, and I got my schedule just like how I want it right now. Worked on some couple awesome. of things that were, you know, had some issues with my, my shoulders and some tension I was having mm-hmm. in, my, in, my, my, in my lower body and back stuff uh-huh. like that i got good yep, people same. music is, <laughs> I'm, I'm enjoying music you know learning music i'm getting better at the guitar i'm talking about like I, I, my, my guitar teacher wow. is actually my my acupressure you know what I'm oh saying? my I, gosh i've i cool. felt yeah i'm talking about oh my goodness yeah, <laughs> I mean, i'm feeling good right now i just started working out again yesterday uh-huh uh-huh you know, but you know yeah sagittarius so, you know, I just, so- you know you have um, what, what, what you what do you see? Okay, so I'm going to just kind of give a, a few hallmarks of your chart so people can follow along. You have a 20 mm-hmm. degree Libra rising, and so that puts mm-hmm. Libra and some Scorpio in your first house, and 21 Scorpio on your second house, and then 22 mm-hmm. Sagittarius on your third house cusp. So you've got all the Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius stuff going on in the sky right now in the first two houses of your chart. Mm-hmm. And so Mm -hmm. uh, Venus is going through your first house. People are looking at you going, wow, he's pretty good looking right now. I want to be around him. (laughs) And you've got, (laughs) yeah, you've got um, Mercury right close. Let me see. It's right near your um, Neptune. 
And so, again, it's about trying to make those dreams come true, those financial dreams. And Venus will be there uh, in a few days, you know, about probably two or three weeks. Let me just look real quick here and see when she gets there. So you're waiting for uh, Venus to join up with your Neptune, which means desires coming true. And it also can bring money, which is a really awesome thing, of course. And that's the 30th of December. So that's like right between Mm. Christmas and New Year's, you'll have a nice little – wad of cash come your way or opportunities for that. It can also mean that you're finally committing to that partner or have that person coming closer and closer into your life and having um, that relationship really settling in. Because um, Mm -hmm. the second house is where I look for the actual physical joining together of people. So even though, like, yes, the seventh house is marriage and partnership, but getting in a relationship, I look at the second house. Marriage, I look at the seventh. So just being in a partnership or a couple, that would be the second. And Venus joining up with your Neptune just inside the cusp of your second house is a big like, hey, somebody's here. There's some kind of commitment that needs to be made. And it can be to you, obviously. You know, it's your chart, your dreams, your desires. So don't forget to commit to yourself. But it also brings right. in a person. It brings in money. You know, it's a really fortunate aspect the last week of the year. And um, it's right before that all that shift happens, like I said, with Mercury. Um, no, wait a minute. What was it? Mercury goes in uh, tomorrow into Sagittarius. And so it was Uranus and Mars change and shift at the first day of the first couple days of next year so there will be another shift for you at that point and let me look at where that falls for you so the shift for you happens in work you're going to have mars go into aries which joins up with your saturn and um yeah mars will be on your chiron so whatever happened with work right now you have a chiron return so there is being a Mm -hmm. kind of a wounding around work being triggered and again that has to do with you it's like a desire that you have um, for what you want to do in your job, in your work environment, and that's being kicked mm-hmm. up right now. And Mars going over that Chiron will probably be like the last little punch to the gut from that. But Neptune is drawing closer and closer over the next decade. It's only going to get closer to healing that wound. So for now, Neptune's in your house of creativity in the fifth house and also romance. So that's Mm -hmm. also adding punctuation to this incoming energy of the Venus-Neptune conjunction and having that person Mm -hmm. in your life and that situation working out better for you. It does also affect your work work environment. So money and work are going to be in cooperation with this energy coming Mm -hmm. in with Venus-Neptune conjunction. Okay. Um, when we're saying work, yeah. we're not necessarily talking about job, though, right? Um, work environment, so it could be a job, but it's Pisces, which usually it breaks things down. It doesn't build it up; it breaks it down, and so that's the energy that's on the transit through the end of the year. When Mars gets into Aries, it joins up with your Saturn, and that's when you are off to the races about making that. Um, that transition into whatever job, if you want another job, it is there, but it's probably going to be the beginning of the year. Okay. It'll be coming in the first couple of weeks of, uh, of January. To be honest with you, I can be honest with you. I want to just be a, I want to just be a full-time well-paid writer. <laughs> then that's what you need to do. And by the time Mars gets yeah. to 20, it'll be in your Libra house, which is writing. So let me tell you when that is. Um, 20 degrees is February 1st, okay? So if you can hold out, um, well, you're already going to get published, so that's one thing. So just keep pursuing that track. Next year, I tell you, it's a a three year. So three is um, an ascended master number, which means we're coming into our own. It's like now it's time to do what we're here to do. So... I would say roll with it. I don't think your chart has anything that says, no, you can't do it. You've got, it looks like there's going to be support of the family coming because you've got a lot of Capricorn energy in that area. And Saturn will be hitting that in a year. It'll be right on the cusp of your home and family within the year. And there's a major change coming around that uh, in about January of 2020. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I hope that helps. 
<laughs> it always does. Ah, well, you're a wonderful person, and I always enjoy talking to you. So I, you should shoot me an email or a text on Facebook or whatever, and just let me know how things are going with your sister and how things are going, you know, in other oh, areas. Uh, remember, okay. I don't know if I told you, but she's cancer free now. <gasps> how did yeah, she do that? Free. That's so awesome. Did she just get uh, uh, chemo or something? She just went through the regular, regular stuff. And, you know, oh, good. I'm so happy to hear that. Good for her. Yeah. I'm I'm very happy yeah. to hear that. And I hope she has a wonderful right. new year along with you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Appreciate <laughs> I appreciate you too, Vaughn. Good talking to you. Always a pleasure, man. Take care. Bye. Merry Christmas. Happy New Bye-bye. Year. Bye-bye. Thanks. Yes, okay. Let's go 651. Hi, 651. How are you? Hi, Sally. This is Linda. I'm Hi, good. Linda. Oh, I'm good. Well. Yeah, that's yeah. nice to hear. Is that good Sagittarius energy coming through right now? <laughs> yes, I know. So, yeah. Well, what can I, what can my I do for you? My biggest question, it's been on my mind um, a while back. We were looking at my notes and um, at zero. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. You made a comment about the, um, the the way my notes were meant that everything in my chart was faded, or that everything in my life is faded, fated, f a t e d. Fated, e t. Yeah. <laughs> um, true for well, everybody? I definitely. Um, no, because what what it is in your chart, they just happen to be right on your rising sign. So you have a two degree Aquarius rising and a zero degree Aquarius North Node and a zero degree uh, Leo South Node. So it's just right there on the horizon. So when you're born, you look out to the eastern horizon, and that is your rising sign. Whatever rising uh, sign is coming up on the horizon at the time you're born from where you are born becomes your rising sign, and the nodes just happen to be right there. So um, it was not only a fated moment for you to be born, but it was a fated time for your mother to have you because that was the time that you came into this world. So you have um, a deep destiny to be here at this time. That's probably a better way to put it. That You came in wanting to be part of the creative energy that honestly is about to really explode in the next decade. Because that's the decade where, of course, Pluto will be on your your north-south node axis. And uh, Saturn will join up with it just before... Saturn goes into Aquarius, so it will go right into your first house after it joins up with Pluto. So it's a very big time for you coming up in a couple of years. So Ooh. let me just look and see where um, all of that is at at the end of next year. There's no mystic rectangles there, is there? Um, honestly, I don't have that chart okay. up here. Let me see if I can I'm look. Uh, like as to... far as in your chart, No. I mean, unless no, at I the did. time I was me... born, because I heard Anne no. Ortley talk about mystic rectangles, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then and and fadedness with mystic rectangles, and then I remembered mm-hmm. your comment about my notes, and so I, that's mm-hmm. why I wanted to look at those again. Yeah, but it's not rectangles. No, just... you have you have a, it's kind of a bowl b o w l effect with your planets, which mean they're clustered on one side of the zodiac. Right. So, you know, you've got them all around that one half for the most part. I mean, you got like Vesta and Chiron, the asteroids away from them, but pretty much all of your planets are within five houses all next to each other. So it's a very tight little formation in your chart. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, no, no mix, mystic rectangles, but um, okay. you do have the the nodes again they you know whenever you have a planet go into aquarius it triggers the north node and opposes the south and that is a time for you to grow more as a person and to end an old story because of the location being at the end of the pisces house wrapping up the old story and the very beginning of the first house which is when you were born so how i express it to people is your rising sign it, you come into this earth at the moment that you take your first breath, you get your rising sign. So that's like, think about that. Like you're coming into this earth and in your very first breath of the probably millions or I mean, maybe billions that you take in a lifetime at that moment. That's pretty significant. 
So right. you've ended the old time in the womb, and now you're out in the in the material world, in the physical world, with the rest of us. That's a faded point. And I mean, even if you didn't have the nodes there, but having the mm-hmm. nodes there. It made, like you came in and you wanted to have significant things happen to you, probably to forward your um, evolution of your karma. And when when you have planets at zero degrees Aquarius, that's really um, it, it brings in enlightenment. Aquarius is again like the genius of the zodiac; it's the channeler. So you get information just naturally coming to you. And again. Tell me again, you said that you were blind. I want to make sure you're the person who called who said that. Is that true? I'm, I'm totally blind. I lost my vision. Yes. My, I lost my eyesight gradually through my whole life. Okay. It wasn't, okay. We didn't know I was losing my eyesight until my mid-20s when it was, wow. when I went in and said, you know, I'm making a lot of typos. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to <laughs> hear that. I need to get my glasses checked. And, and he said, yeah. oh, then your glasses. Wow. It's degenerative? Is that what it was? Yeah, it was degenerative. degenerative. So I lost it gradually. So it was diagnosed in 77. I was legally Mm -hmm. blind in 78 and totally blind in, we are estimating, like 2005. Oh, my goodness. The retina, the cells in the retina have been dying. And so there's virtually nothing left in my retinas. Oh, my goodness. And there's no no such thing as a retina um, replacement, huh? No, because of the because of the optic nerve, because the retina is mm-hmm. attached to the optic nerve, and there's so many. It's like a phone cable with zillions of right. fiber optic. <laughs> yeah, things. they can't they can't do that. And I mean, medicine is certainly saying there's no reversal, but that's yeah. You but know, I'm open time to all tell. You never know. Um, yeah, I'm I mean, open I'm to all not saying I'm not saying it's necessarily a um, a cure or anything, but um, I really have enjoyed the energy of reiki have you done any reiki with your air sign you got sun neptune mercury and saturn in libra which is an air sign and reiki is really great for people who have a lot of air in their chart because it is yeah, I'm a reiki like master. are you a reiki master do, so do you give yourself reiki on your eyes um yeah i do all kinds of things you know on my eyes i do yeah mm-hmm. i don't like i said i don't there was a time in my life when I focused a lot of energy in bringing my eyesight back. Um, I don't, I don't focus a lot of energy on it now, but I'm certainly aware of it. In different, I, you play with different things. Mm-hmm. It's not a okay. driving for me to have my eyesight return. Oh wow! Well, that's good that you're yeah. you're not very comfortable with the, how when your I'm life is question, right now. I kind of go um, because if it came back all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. It would be shocking to my system. It would be a lot to yeah. adjust to. They're used to not having wow. all that stimulus. Right. It's kind of like with my ears well, being in a cloud. It's like too much. Yeah, and you also, your body makes up for having one of the senses gone, and it, it heightens others. So yes. yeah, I could totally see how you'd be like, well, especially ah, my, you know, especially overload. my intuition and my sensitivity to the unseen. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's very cool. So, um, no, that big. that point, yeah, that point in your chart. And interestingly, you have Uranus, which I think this is how I expand my knowledge and awareness of astrology is by observation of patterns. And mm-hmm. because you have a two degree, we've talked about this a little bit before. You have a two degree Aquarius rising, and my son has a one degree Aquarius rising. Hey. He, yeah, he has. Um, uh, he has Uranus on the cusp. He has uh, Neptune on the, right there on his rising. Like the moment he was born, he had Neptune, uh, Uranus, and the moon all conjunct right up there by the horizon. So wow. he also has an optic nerve issue, and he's got oh. lazy eye in one eye, and he is he cannot he's he can't see depth of field well. Like he pretty much has a Coke bottle lens for that eye, but. For all intents and purposes, he's practically blind just from the fuzziness of it, he says. So um, I find it interesting. And then Uranus, which rules Aquarius, um, you have that in your house of health. So oh. I find that really, really an interesting. And not only that, it's within eight degrees of your south node. So that's oh, part that's of the fadedness. Yeah, it's part of the fadedness of what's going on with your chart. And just in case you wanted to know, Aquarius rules astrology, and so that's something that you could be really good at. It seems like, well, do you do you study a lot? It sounds like you do, but 
Are you? I listen a lot. Into I, it? You know, I listen a lot. I mm-hmm. glean a lot of information. I don't know how. I don't know how somebody would do astrology being totally blind because you know because you can't mm-hmm. look at charts. Right. Well, probably you would have to somehow find a way to get it translated into Braille right. if you read Braille, and and or um, uh, use your computer, and somehow they they would have to have a program that translates it to Audible. You know, so where you could. Uh, somehow click on something on the screen and it would translate everything. And, you know, um, I have, when I produce charts, like I have a a computerized chart report that I can send, and then you would click on that and it would read it for you. And so if you set your computer up, I'm assuming maybe you have a computer that responds to voice commands. Is that true or no? I have a screen read. I have a a computer and I use a screen reader called JAWS. On mm-hmm. it. Generally, JAWS cannot access anything that's direct. You okay. know, it can only do like headings, links, form fields. I see. Those kinds of but when it comes to well, pictures, they're so far there than you, any help us access it, pictures. It's, it's probably going to expand with Uranus going into Taurus. That there's mm-hmm. probably, I mean, by the time Uranus in eight years gets to Gemini. Gemini is an air sign. It's a thinking sign. It's a creative, and it like it. It's the sign that doesn't. Ha- this mind does not shut off and also yeah. Aquarius can be that way so by the time the ruling planet of Aquarius gets into Gemini I can tell you it's going to be like all bets are off with technology and we're mm. going to go like on hyper speed warp drive so wow. it wouldn't surprise me if that kind of stuff starts to get really addressed Uranus being what I deem now having uh, made some connections here to eye issues when that goes into Taurus, Taurus is about the material world and the body. So yeah, that there could be some um, new changes for people with disabilities coming in. Absolutely. So, you know, just, you know, be aware of that coming up. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, I hope that answers your question. And maybe gave That's you a little bit Thank more. You. Okay. Merry Christmas. And Merry I'll Christmas. Talk, talk to you again soon. Bye Linda. All right. Much love. Take care. Thanks. Same to you. Bye. Okay, 804. Hi, who is this? Hi, this is Liz. Hi, Liz. Have you called the show before? No, I have not. Okay, wonderful. Well, thanks for calling. Let me just set you up a chart here, and let me just get a couple bits of information entered. And let me see where to go with that. There we go. And what can I let me get your birth information real quick? What what yes. is uh day, place and time? That would be uh March eighth, nineteen eighty. Okay. At ten ten twenty eight PM in Charlottesville, Virginia. Okay. I hope I spelled that right. Two T's and an E and an S. Okay, it looks like I got it, so I'm very happy. I got got that all taken care of. Okay, so what can I do for you today? Um, well, I I guess I was just wondering if you see anything. What do you see for night uh, for 2019 for me? Like anything 2019. changing? Anything yeah. New? Yeah. Oh yes, there's always lots of change going on. Um, you've actually got a couple <laughs> of trigger trigger point three trigger points that I see right away in your chart. Um, bigger, which is Jupiter, will be going into your second house of money, so that will also bring a lot of fortune, a lot of opportunity. I don't know if you earn a living through education of any type or music, or um, you're definitely going to have opportunities in other places because of Sagittarius is travel. So when Jupiter, the ruler of Sagittarius, goes into the house of money, it's going to hit your Neptune, which is very exciting because uh, Jupiter expands wherever it's at, and Neptune is your dreams, and your dreams are in the house of money. So whatever it is, well, I, I should say money and love, and it also is beauty. It can be music and singing, so that is triggered. Um, you know, like all the usual suspects, travel, education, mm-hmm. higher understanding of spirituality, uh, finding a romantic partner, finding a great income or a job, you know, can come in for you. And it's not too far away. I mean, Jupiter, let me just see where Jupiter is. Um, 
in January for you. Yeah, so it hits there the second week of January. It hits uh, your cusp of money and love. So the second house, um, let me see the exact date, will be the 8th of January. And then it hits your natal Neptune in March. So you're going to have, uh, March will be pretty good for you because that's like, your dreams coming true a great deal. And there will probably be a trip somewhere with someone wonderful, I would assume. And (laughs) let's see. So Saturn is at the end degrees of house of money, which is restriction. So the restriction is going to be coming off of that part of your chart, which is great. And then you're going to actually be setting in roots and, and bringing in the money where in, let's see, communications and also education, is the area that that will trigger. So it it can be writing, it can be uh, broadcasting, but it's taking ownership and owning your authority within your voice. It's expressing your voice and your point of view. It's the Gemini house. When Saturn goes into the that'll be the Gemini house. And it's about owning your voice. And it's also giving you what was restricted in the past. So it means money is going to be coming in more. And so it's a big shift in, I think you're going to feel more grounded on some level, but you'll also, um, your voice, this is the other side of it there could be a restriction of your voice of how you're able to get that out. And that's for two and a half years because that's how long Saturn goes through your house of communications. But Uh what it's doing while it's there is really making you step up to the plate and know that your voice matters. And that's ultimately the lesson of Saturn restricting our voices is to make us fight to have it heard And so I think that that's – and it can also connect to neighbors. There may be a connection between neighbors and siblings with this energy because that's also ruled by the third house. So know that that's coming in as well. Um, And then the last thing I see is, yeah, is Neptune is leaving your house of home and family and just past your Mercury. So there's an old story, again, it's the the thread of – your life that goes through the ancestry of the family and it's that story that sentimentality of the family of origin and it's going to shift over into creativity and you're probably already starting to feel like this really strong push towards wanting to express yourself creatively and hopefully if you haven't ever been artistic you pick up some type of artistic expression because that's really what your chart's screaming (laughs) it's like photography or um it could be something like ceramics or stained glass work. Anything, you know, like the fifth house is really big with Leo, the Leo energy likes things made with fire, but you've got Pisces ruling it and that's water. So maybe there's something mm-hmm. that you could use with fluids, you know, there might be paint or something that brings in water into your expression as well. Or it can even be um, creatively using your uh psychic ability or your intuitive awareness to help people and to connect to people, which is also the Leo energy. Leo loves to be connected to people. And although I have to tell you, you have Mercury in Pisces in the house of home and family. So that's a cancer house. And then you have sun in Pisces in the house ruled by the sun. So there's a really strong connection to children and also um, intuitive awareness of things. And that's really getting triggered with Mars on your sun right now. And so it's just like you're probably really psychic right now and really drawing in a lot of information about people and children and family. Like your family can't yeah. hide anything from you right now. You're like, oh, don't even tell me that. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I do think I feel I'm feeling that, yeah. And I'm also yeah, I'm working to to develop it, and also working yeah. on getting back into um, some of my artistic things, mm-hmm. which I've had awesome. a sort of break break from for a while. So yeah, all that it's going to come in really strong. Too. Yeah, and then nice. the last thing, I, I, one more thing is Uranus is on your Venus. It's when it goes direct in March. In well, it goes direct in January. When it goes into Taurus in March, it's hitting your Venus, your natal Venus. So there could be some unexpected. Um, either it could be like a romance in the office, or romance in a work environment, or it could trigger something. That actually, I want to also say, may have something to do with the throat, and also kind of feeds into the whole thing I was talking about, Saturn in the third house. 
So yeah. um, they're going to be in cooperation. So there's definitely something where you need to get your ideas out and you're going to you're going to have a connection to a woman in the workplace and also be able to express a more feminine side of yourself that is going to be cooperative but also help you grow and help you connect in at, in a work environment, okay? And then health-wise, um, just let me see. It's the throat. It's throat issues. That's why I brought it up. So it has to do with the throat and, and communication. So just know that that's there as well. Okay. And it's also okay. beauty. Again, it's it's about beauty because it's Taurus. So there's like an aesthetic. You need to feel valued in the work environment. And um, yeah. and Uranus in Taurus on your Venus in the house of work could mean that you're going to work for yourself if you don't already. Okay. I do. Yeah, actually. Awesome. Mostly, that's what I do, yeah. Okay, so. great. Well, um, thanks awesome. so much for calling. Yeah, and you Thank have a wonderful you. Christmas and New Year. All right, take you care. You too. <laughs> thanks Bye. a lot. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm going to take one quick last call, but i got to get out of here pretty quick. So 817. Hi, 817. Who is this? Hey, Shelly. It's Nancy. How are you? Hi, Nancy. I'm doing fine. What can I do for you? Boy, you're busy today, huh? It's great. I'm busy. Yep, you're the, my last call, and I, I've got to cruise out, so I'll answer one question for you. Tell me what you got. Yeah, I just, you know, my question is with Jupiter and Sagittarius, which is in my 11th right now, but heading into the 12th, how can yeah. you, how, because it expands, what, how does that, mm-hmm. what does that look like with it being in the 12th house? Um, it means um, that you're going to have, uh, like intuitive hits around things that are of structure and systems. And so you may find a new way to do it. That's much more intuitive and much more balanced in a psychic sense. It can mean that you're going to find a way to translate what is intuitive into a physical, tangible thing that'll help other people. Or, um, you know, you can like, you, you just create the systems from what's coming through, or you start to understand systems in a more intuitive way. That's kind of where it's at. And you've already had Saturn in that house for the last two years anyway. So you're already kind of picking up some of that energy about how, how things are systematic. But Jupiter is really what Jupiter in your 12th house is going to do, because when it's in Capricorn, it's like, no, you don't want to be responsible for everyone else. You want to just be responsible for yourself. Cause again, it's the planet of self-interest. So it's really wow. going to help kind of um, drive home the point Saturn's been trying to make, which is quit thinking you're responsible for everyone in your environment and just focus on you. And Saturn going into your first house, Saturn return, second Saturn return. No. Nope. Yes, is this yes, second Saturn return. Um mm-hmm. that'll be it'll be like, no, I've got to be about me now. And Saturn in the first house means shore up your sense of self and identity. Jupiter in the twelfth house will be reiterating you've got to be much more self interested and stop taking care of everyone else and start taking care of you. And it's a psychological thing. Like you will be like so ready to just drop a lot of those like so this is all this is all like channeling coming through because I'm just like off to the races with you. It's all coming through for me. Um, so Jupiter and yeah, Jupiter in the twelfth house is like this huge expansion of um, understanding what you need to be comfortable and what you what what structures you need in your life that make you feel comfortable in like a subconscious way or a psychological way it's in the back of your mind like feels right to me and you'll have much more expansion of things like i mean it's just whatever is capricorn for you whatever resonates to capricorn it could be um definitely in the 12th house it can be vintage things you know like um, antiques and anything vintage and anything going to the past makes you feel cozy and really grounded so it it can be an expansion of that, but it could also mean going to your homeland of your family's ancestry because it's Jupiter it wants mm-hmm. to travel. So it can wow. be a lot of different things, but that's kind of in a nutshell what that's all about. Okay. Good. Well, thanks. I think the twelfth house is kind of deep, hidden in secret. So good. It is, but it's all. It could be finding out uh, things about Dad because Dad's Capricorn. It could be finding out mm-hmm. um, different different information like i said you can be keyed into the government keyed into um overarching systems that we have around us it could be like hoas or local government mm-hmm. or businesses yeah. if you're really whoa i know what's going on with that you know or whatever like you just get hits on it so okay yeah. sorry all right you're right it's 
for you on. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, you're welcome. Appreciate My it. pleasure. Well, I take care. Merry Happy Christmas. Christmas and New Year and any any other holiday you celebrate. <laughs> Okay, that's the end of the show. And don't forget, check out the ebook. It's over on my Angelic Zodiac page, and there's a discount right now. The code is on that page, too. And I love having you here, and we're starting to think about what's going on for the new year. And I will be having the new year show probably um, either Christmas Day or New Year's Day because they both fall on a Tuesday. Who knew? Anyway, that's the end of the show for today, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Take care. To subscribe, please click the picture of Shelley on the right or the red button below.